This is a Mason Lee and Camflex valve. It is a 3 to 15 psi air close regulator. Here, it has 3 pounds input, 9 pounds input, and 15 pounds input. We are going to change the action of the valve from air close to air open. After the valve is depressured, apply 9 pounds to the actuator, so the lever assumes an intermediate position. Loosen the clevis set screw. Remove the clevis pin. And disconnect the airline. Loosen the actuator lever set screw. Remove the nuts from the packing box studs. And yoke support studs. Remove the yoke, packing box flange, and actuator lever. Remove the actuator. Install the actuator in a position symmetrically opposite its original position. Tighten the yoke support nuts. And tighten the packing box flange stud nuts. Use the actuator lever to close the valve. And apply 3 PSI to the actuator. Adjust the clevis. until the holes in the clevis and the lever align. Install the clevis pin and tighten the set screw. Tighten the actuator lever set screw and the clevis lock nut. Remove the hand wheel retaining ring. and reinstall opposite of its original position. Reinstall the retaining ring. Check the valve operation by stroking it. The valve is now an air open device. Here it is with three pounds input. Nine pounds input. and 15 pounds input. Install the valve in the line this way, with flow tending to open the valve upon signal failure. Now, work exercise 9 in your workbook. This is a Mason Leon butterfly valve. It is an air open device. Here it is with 3 psi input. 9 psi input. And 15 psi input. We are going to change the action of the valve from air open to air close. Begin by removing the clevis pen cotter pen. Remove the clevis pen. Loosen the set screw. Notice that the set screw is in slot number one. Also, notice that slot number one has the shaft key, which is red, in it. Remove the vein arm from the shaft. Install the vein arm so the key fits into slot number two. Install the set screw in slot number two. Tighten the set screw. Grasp the vein arm and close the valve. 
Apply 15 pounds input. Rotate the clevis until the holes in the clevis and the connecting link align. Reinstall the clevis pin. And the clevis pin cotter pin. Tighten the clevis lock nut. Stroke the valve to check its operation. Make any necessary travel adjustments by moving the pivot along the vein arm. Turn the travel indicator over so it agrees with the valve action and position. Now, work exercise number 10 in your workbook. Sometimes a control valve will have worn out trim and it will leak internally, even though the plug is seated and the valve has full travel. A valve in this condition controls poorly. To find out if the valve is leaking internally, you must verify that the plug is seated. First, block and bypass the control valve. Then, loosen the stem lock nuts. Run the nuts down the plug stem and lock them. Turn the stem. Use the lock nuts. Never use vice grips, pliers, or channel locks to turn a plug stem. It will damage the stem permanently. Apply the signal air that should close the valve. Turn the plug stem until you feel the valve plug seat. If you feel excessive friction, the valve is already seated. Do not turn it any more. Return the valve to service. If it continues to leak, disassemble it and check the trim. Repair or replace as necessary. After the control valve is repaired, you may want to leak check it. Or if a valve requires tight shutoff, you must leak check it before you install it. Apply a source of pressure, such as nitrogen, to the valve. The pressure applied should be equivalent to the valve's normal operating pressure. And apply the input signal that will close the valve. Attach a piece of tubing on the other end of the valve. Submerge the tubing in water. Turn on the nitrogen and observe for leaks. Replace or repair the trim to obtain bubble-tight shutoff. There may be times when you need to change the actuator to a different type. The actuator must fit the valve, not only in size, but in thrust and stroke. For instance, a 2-inch body size Fisher valve would require a size 40 series 657 or 667 actuator. These are spring-opposed diaphragm actuators. Or a size 40 series 470 actuator. This is a pneumatic piston operated valve. Refer to parts books to match actuators and valves. Now, Work Exercise 11 in your workbook.